Uh, this is a work that I did with our colleague, uh, Zandra Tam. So uh, thank you, uh, Zandra. Um, but the good thing with being the last presenter is uh, over, with, with the same topic is that you can gloss over some of the topics and just focus on, on some of the details that are, I guess, uh, distinct to, to Sambuana del Norte. Next slide, please. Okay, so we have uh, we did a similar uh, similar design as the other uh, sites. So we looked at uh, different data for for the whole province. So we looked at um, administrative data from different government agencies, national surveys and censuses, and also field work uh, in two sites, uh, Sindang and Leon Postigo. We talked with program managers, frontline workers, uh, child caregivers, and we administered a checklist with the different uh, local governments in that province. Next slide, please. So just to provide a background of uh, where Sambuang del Norte is and what's in Sambuang del Norte. Next slide, please. Uh, Sambuang del Norte is a relatively new province. It has 25 municipalities and two cities. Uh, and one of the key feature of Sambuang del Norte is that 97% of their land area is strongly is composed of strongly sloping sloping to very steep hills and mountains. So less than three percent of their land is suitable for agriculture. However, they have these uh, large, uh, very long coastline facing uh, the Sulu Sea. Um, with 97% of their um, of their land area being uh, steep hills and mountains, it's not surprising that in 2017, based on the Department of Health uh, report, 596 uh, barangays out of 691 in the province are classified as Gidas. Next slide, please. So they have a relatively small population of 1 million. A third of these population, though, is concentrated in just three LGUs, uh, mainly those who are richer, uh, bigger LGUs. They have a young population uh, with 22, uh, with the median age at 22. Uh, they have a high literacy rate at 95% among those aged uh, 15 and older. Next slide, please. In terms of child nutrition and health status, uh, if you compare them with the Philippines and the rest of Sambuanga Peninsula, they have a relatively um, high uh, malnutrition prevalence among those uh, below five years old. So they have higher proportion of children who are underweight, stunted, and wasted. But in terms of deaths per live birth, they have relatively low, uh, low prevalence. Uh, although we are not sure if this is because of reporting issues, but in the official reports, they have lower uh, deaths per thousand live births. Next slide, please. So based on the, uh, so here we're trying to compare the um, OPT, the Operation Timbang, which is an administrative data and national nutrition survey estimates for the whole province, which is the gray area, and the OPT for the different uh, municipalities. And what's apparent here is that uh, the, the estimates, the statistics from the administrative data is comparably lower to the, to the somehow uh, better data from the National Nutrition Survey. But what is also apparent from this um, from this picture is a large disparity in, in estimates in undernutrition uh, using different measures uh, in the different municipalities, cities of Sambuang del Norte. Next slide, please. So going now to the results of our FGD and, uh, and other results, next slide, please. So like any other LG in the Philippines, they have a local nutrition action officers, which effectively serves as the secretary of the local nutrition committees. Often like in other uh, case sites, these positions are designated to the health officer or the social welfare and development officer, the population officer, if they have that. They have those. So many times these are doctors, nurses, midwives, although these people have their own uh, designations. They, they have their uh, primary designation and being an L now is just an added designation that which sometimes they do or sometimes not really. So in terms of prior, priority setting, uh, like in other uh, sites, uh, these are executive led. So, kung ano yung sinabi ng mayor, ano yung sinabi ng, ng provincial governor, ito yung gagawin nila, and they support that. And at the time of the FGDs, the, uh, we asked, and there's, they were saying that uh, the focus was on infrastructure in line with the national BBB program. 
uh, they've mentioned that some program managers have been consulted when they are doing when they are setting the priorities for the local government. Uh, and sometimes it appears that uh, if at all, if they were asked, the frontline workers, yung ating mga barangay health workers, yung ating mga um, health officers, nutrition officers, uh, they appear to have a very minor role in, in setting these priority for the local government. Next slide, please. So um, we have local nutrition plans, and this is part of the 33 legally mandated local uh, lo local uh, plans that should be developed by any LGU. And merong uh, pro forma uh, national nutrition council about local nutrition plans. Uh, but and, and we we compare the nutrition action plans that from the different municipalities as among the north and what we found is that uh, there is a wide variation in quality and availability even availability of local nutrition plans meron mga uh, municipalities na wala or isang sheet lang yung kanila local nutrition action plan which is just uh, budget so meron suggested format um uh, nnc but many do not conform to these formats uh, but among those in a conform as a format, it appears that the local nutrition committees have a robust understanding of the underlying causes of malnutrition. So they understand that this is because of you know, access to resources, issues, so mainly household and community issues. However, due to the local nutrition action plans, it appears that uh, rarely na may mention yung mga issues about government capacity or government resources or the lack of it. To be able to respond to these, uh, to respond to the issues on nutrition. So we also did a checklist uh, of ano ba yung do sa mga local nutrition action plans. And the, because in the local nutrition action plans, they have these issues. And then ano yung gagawin natin and how would we place this, uh, these actions. And for the most part, yung mga interventions na common is yung Nutrition education, feeding, food production, livelihood program, nutrition month celebration. It's a nutrition month celebration and a constant trend. Uh, what we noticed though is that uh, we, kasi itong local nutrition plan, that should be, uh, this is a sectoral plan. And, and ideally, you would want that to be part, at least idea is part of the comprehensive development plan uh, para ma access mo yung local development fund. But for the most part, at least for the for the LNAPs and the CDPs that we've compared, many of the LNAPs are not really ano ba, linked to the CDPs, which for us is a lost opportunity. Kasi kung hindi nakalink yung LNAP mo sa CDP, then you cannot access this uh, local development fund, which is a lost opportunity sana to, to finance uh, the local location plans. Next slide, please. So in terms of service delivery, next slide. Uh, the ECCD uh, and the F1KD law ma has uh, have these different mandated services and nakalista dun sa batas na very specific. And what we did was to have this checklist and ask the local government units, do you have these services? So so many are uh, many of these services are government provided as part of the local of the usual na LGA programs for maternal child health and nutrition, ECCD and family planning. So these are vertical programs. Uh, when we say vertical programs, we say really program in maternal child health and nutrition, in ECCD and family planning, and they are not really integrated. And ideally, in, in the first 1,000 days, the framework, you would want these services that even if they are standalone, uh, somehow, nakalink sila sa isa't isa para nasusundan mo yung bata as the child develops. Uh, when we compared uh, those um, the checklist that we got from the from the LGUs, are the most common na hindi available. So one is those services na not necessarily facility based. So pag mga yung services is facility based, check yung mga LGUs chan, madaling ibigay. So like nutrition counseling, hindi maraming mga LGUs ang dis nagsabi na wala silang ganon. So organizing breastfeeding groups because this this is in the community support for home kitchen garden. So nasa labas siya ng opisina. So usually yun yung mga sinasabi nila. Another is that uh, if the service require inter-office or agency coordination, so halimbawa, um, yung, matern yung health office, yung RHU, at yung agriculture office, pag meron nang kailangan ganung uh, coordination, dun na medyo wala na yung ganung services sa LGU. So, like yung enrollment sa social health insurance, so from RHU to PhilHealth. 
availability of lactation breaks in workplace. So, um, kasama na dyan yung, yung uh, sa employment. So, also, mga wala din siya on, if it's psychosocial in nature, so yung counseling and psychosocial support na in the F1KD law, this is provided in different stages, especially sa adolescence at saka sa living in stress. And finally, pag-related to oral care. And this is not an, just an issue about uh, ECCD, F1KD, but uh, oral care in general, uh, services provided in the Philippines. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in terms of identification of beneficiaries, uh, usually mga program managers, they rely heavily on the interpersonal interaction of the frontline workers uh, with the household. When we say frontline workers, ito yung mga barangay nutrition scholar, barangay health workers. Kasi yung barangay health workers and BNS, yung iba nga meron silang barangay population officers, uh, they have this uh, parang area na sila yung mayroong uh, toka, toka nila. So kilala nila yung mga tao nandun. And usually, doon naman sila nakatira. So, alam nila kung sino yung bata, sino yung buntis, uh, sino yung mapayat, sino yung at-risk. So, so nakarelay talaga, very reliant to program sa frontline workers. Next slide, please. Uh, when we were in Sambuanga del Norte last year, what, what, we were happy with the innovations uh, that the local governments has introduced. So, um, Meron yung OPT, yung Operation Team Ban, that is part of a regular program of LGUs na mandated from by NNC. But they also have these household census. So meron silang sariling census to profile yung needs ng mga, yung mga constituents nila. So para alam nila kung sino nakatira sa ganitong bahay, ilang taon, kung merong sakit o kung merong buntis. They also, have, they also introduced an LGU caravan. This is a one-stop shop for LGU services. So ang idea, uh, clusters of barangay uh, for this day, itong mga services natin, so yung uh, census, yung registration ng birth, yung registration ng businesses, uh, yung RHU, me medical dental, lahat tayo sabay-sabay tayo, pupunta tayo sa isang barangay. And ang goal nila is every month, makupuntahan nila yung buong, buong bayan nila, kung bayan yan. And another is on food production. Uh, isang come on ng provincial government ay meron silang uh, meron silang bakahan, a uh, dairy farm. Tapos yung dairy na kukuha nila, ginagawa nilang ice candy. Although uh, medyo matinis yung ice candy nila, so hindi ko siya na sure na very very nutritious siya. Pero yung ice candy is a come on to pe for people na pumunta pag meron silang mga meetings. Yung pumupunta raw sila sa mga Caravans, may dila silang ice candy para maraming taong pumunta. At least for the ice candy and for the other services. Um, meron din sila during that time, uh, meron silang plan na gumawa ng isang parang factory for food supplements or yung mga, ano, uh, yung mga chips na nutritious. So, yeah. uh, next slide please. Uh, ito yung mga challenges naman na, na nakita namin when we were there. So, for the program managers and frontline workers, uh, they said that they had difficulty convincing households to participate. Uh, halimbawa, meron silang program, uh, feeding program, but this is a one-off thing. So may feeding program, pupunta sila doon, uh, pero kaka hindi pupunta yung mga households. Kasi nasabi nila, uh, kasi tamad daw, or baka nahihiya, mga ganong issues. Another issue na ni-raise nila is that uh, minsan kasi merong age group lang yung, gusto, yung pwede doon sa feeding program. Pero kung isa yung batang pwede, uh, isa yung batang eligible pero lima yung anak nila, imbis na pumunta yung isa, hindi nila na papapuntahin kasi hindi naman kasama yung iba nilang mga anak. Uh, there is also issue about transportation and communication facilities in one area. I mentioned that on a, on a good day, maaraw... Uh, it takes about two hours to go to, to this site. Pero kung umulang na, so mga eight hours siya. So just imagine kung buntis ka in that, in that area, kailangan mo, meron siyang medical emergency, you have to go uh, to a health facility. So talagang issue siya. Uh, in terms of communication naman, um, yung usual reporting nila sa RHU, yung mga frontline workers usually uh, is done on a Friday. So... Uh, Meron mga areas na dead spot dun sa, dun sa area. So what they do is go down from uh, usually mga mountainous regions. To. So pupunta sila sa may, may daanan para lang makapag-text. 
And that takes a lot of time. Uh, in terms of caregivers naman, uh, general, yung mga caregivers naman, ang sinasabi nila, generally, wala naman daw silang problem with access to government services. So kung kailangan nilang magpa sa facility, they can, they can easily go. Uh, one potential, although there's this uh, quality issue that they've raised, na medyo masusungit daw yung mga frontline workers. So minsan daw uh, naninigaw, may, meron silang ganun. Although hindi naman siya, siyempre lahat. Meron lang sinasabi na meron mga ganun nangyayari. Also, uh, they've mentioned uh, hard quotas, na mentioned dito sa ibang site. Uh, hard quotas or schedule that which may dissuade uh, further access dun sa ibang mga namay. For instance, uh, halimbawa, Tuesday ang araw ng buntis. Tapos hindi ka ina galing ka pa sa bundok, araw ng buntis. Pwede mo sa, sa facility hapon na, sarado na, pasara na, hindi ka na maaahutan. Although merong mga kami mga pinuntahan na ina-extend naman yung hours nila para ma-accommodate yung mga yung mga patas na galing sa malalayo. Pero merong mga sites naman na talagang hard sila na pag ganitong oras sa lasing ko, sarado, sarado na talaga. And that is wage people to go to facilities. Parang nadadala ba? Ganun yung, yung pagkakasabi. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of financing, next slide. Uh, when we look at the different uh, LGUs in, in the province, mataas yung reliance nila on the internal revenue allotment. And, and to some extent, this is uh, because yung endowment nila on land. So, okay. So, Siyempre, kung nakarelate sila, kung nakarelate sila sa ira, magkano lang yun, hindi sila nakapag, uh, nakapag-raise sa sarili ng revenues. This affects the resources that's available for them, for the services na bibigay nila. So, uh, this does not affect just health, pero yung iba pa mga services. So, pati agriculture, even public works. So, dun sa mga iba naming mga LGs na pinuntahan, they've mentioned that they leverage on ties with the national agencies. Yung mga iba... Uh, dumutulong sa pusulat sa pangwisma, dumutulong sa DPWH, national, para makahingi ng tulong for, for the IDFA projects that they want or that they need for their uh, LGU. Next slide, please. So, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na pag-limited yung income ng LGU mo, uh, limited din siyempre yung kaya mong ibigay na servisyo. And this is not unique to ECCD First 1,000 Days Program. So, and what we found here, at least in this graph, is that when you expand yung LGU income, nakita naman natin yung nag-expand din yung mga services. So, so, tumataas din naman yung binibigay nilang pera for ECCDF1 daily. Next slide. Uh, ito yung medyo nakakalungkot kasi uh, compared yung stunting prevalence sa municipality LGU to their population health nutrition expenditure per capita. And what we found is that Yung mga actually matataas ang um, matataas ang malnutrition rate, sila yung mabababa, mabababa ang uh, ini-invest sa population health and nutrition, which could be siyempre a factor of the resources as available to them. So may, may, hindi siya causal but meron ganung correlation. Next slide. Uh, in terms of physical and human resource, uh, next slide. Pati yung sinasabi ni Connie kanina na not all LGUs are created. Not LG, all LGUs are not created equal. So some LGUs are more fortunate than others. So meron mga resources because of the because of mga LGUs na because of the resources that's available to them. Uh, although gusto nilang mag hire, they cannot hire because of the PS cap. So ito lang yung para natin kaya hanggang ganito lang kadami yung kaya natin hire. So it directly affects yung workload ng mga frontline workers na kung konti lang yung kaya kong ihar at isang doktor lang yung kaya kong ihar di isang doktor pa sa lahat and again, uh, this issue is not unique to the health sector but do sa buong LGU kasi kung minsan gusto nila ng engineer hindi rin sila makapag-hire kasi may PS ka so to a large extent they, they rely on HH on the deployment program by the Department of Health although maraming program managers are they are somewhat concerned with the sustainability kasi isip nila pa paano pag wala na itong deployment program uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So, uh, in terms of human resource, community volunteers are important. So, ito yung mga barangay nutrition scholars, barangay health workers. These are really important because they perform critical frontline services. So, they do the monitoring, they do the promotion, sometimes they provide the service. 
however, they do not enjoy the same level of benefits and compensation, security of tenure, uh, o kahit na parang full time, sabi volunteer, pero full time naman yung trabaho nila. Uh, in one area, as much as 150 young children and 110 pregnant women ang cargo ng isang uh, frontline worker. And they get only between 350 to 1,200, depending kung gaano ka generous yung LJU uh, per month. So, and generally, they are at the pleasure of their local services, a local executive. Uh, so, it affects the supply no mga trained, capacitated frontline workers natin. Next slide. Uh, ito, this is a kwento ng resources kung meron barangay health, barangay, uh, health station, then it means na kaya nilang mas, mas madaling ma-access yung mga resources. Next slide. Um, you know, the LGUs, uh, maybe because of the resources that they have, uh, they rely heavily on the supplies from the national government. So, for instance, you know, vaccines, you know, food supplement, they get this from the national governments. Although they also receive from, uh, from community organizations, NGOs. So, uh, one issue when we were there is that there was a uh, miscommunication between the national government and the LGUs because sabi nila, promise daw yung national government, pero walang dumating. Hindi nila nilagay sa budget nila kasi nag-promise daw yung national government. Tapos ganun. So parang may miscommunication, which is an important issue. Uh, in case of stop out, nung nandun kami, ang issue was uh, vaccines. Uh, meron mga region, uh, well, halos lahat nung, nung nakausap namin ng mga LGUs, pag walang vaccine or walang supply, uh, to the extent na kaya nilang uh, kumuha, mag-leverage dun sa mga friends nila from the other sectors, kumukuha sila. Pero kung wala nang stop, uh, tigil. Tigil lang ating programa. Walang, walang vaccination, walang food supplementation. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of bright spot, um, they have these, in some um, LGUs, they have these peer-to-peer -peer learning among frontline workers, although this is there. Uh, one issue with frontline workers is that uh, they so, they're supposed to be capacitated, pero hindi lahat na bibigyan ng chance uh, to go to trainings. Merong mga, mga frontline workers na three years ng frontline workers, pero wala pang training. And to some extent, yung peer-to-peer -to -peer, peer -peer learning uh, bridges that gap. Uh, but despite these challenges, uh, yung training, yung malit, yung malit yung nakukuha nilang pera from the government, yung mga LGU personnel, uh, they said that they generally fulfilled with, with their work and are looking forward to continue working the same position uh, in the near future. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of information and communication, next slide. Uh, so they use, when they do these plans, when they do the programs, Yung mga managers have different information sources, so OPT. Uh, although yung mga issues yung OPT, yung measurement tools na ginagamit, hindi ma merong mga nagsabi na hindi properly calibrated. Na pag kumuha ka ng timbangan, pag sinabi mo 1 kilo, minsan hindi siya 1 kilo. Or minsan um, ad hoc yung mga measuring, measuring tape ang ginagamit instead of, the, instead of the usual na calibrated na stick or yung mga weighing scale. Uh, there was also um, an issue of paano ba minimeasure yung baby? Halimbawa, baby, nakatayo ba siya o nakahiga pag minimeasure? Pag nakahiga, merong, merong correction na ina-add. Uh, 7 centimeters ba? 0.7 inches? 0.7 inches or 7 inches? Parang ganun. And they also had difficulty calculating standardized scores to calculate ilang ba yung uh, under, undernourished na mga bata. Next slide. Uh, one issue that we found is that Ito is for the OPT. Kinompare namin yung ilang bata ba yung napuntahan nila compared sa ilan yung batang nandun based sa census. And what we found out is that meron mga areas na, na smart, parang a little over 10% lang yung napuntahan nila mga bata. Tapos meron mga areas naman na 15 times yung mga batang nandun dapat yung pinuntahan nila. So saan nang galing yung 14 times na mga batang minesure nila? So which... which uh, parang question yung credibility, yung validity ng data na, na ginagamit. Next slide. Okay, next slide please. So, very critical yung frontline workers sa dissemination ng information. Uh, 
because according to the parents and the caregivers, the mga frontline workers not in DNSBWs, they are uh, they are the key source of trusted information. Sabi ng mga parents at mga caregivers. Uh, other dissemination forms that are used by LGUs include yung traditional media, there are mga kapihan, guestings, so yung mass media natin. There are mga information blast through barangay captain, so yung mga parang merong umiikot yung barangay tapos nakasakay sa jeep na merong uh, stereo. Uh, walang masyadong social media, which is surprising at this, uh, these times, na walang masyadong gumagamit ng social media. Next slide, please. Oh, one issue with the social media, though, is, syempre, mahina yung sinta. Kaya siguro ganun. Uh, next slide. Uh, in terms of nurturing care practices, uh, among FGD participants, uh, generally, meron lang good knowledge of nurturing care practices at home. So, alam nila yung ideal timing of antenatal care, uh, optimal breastfeeding duration, sabi na six months, uh, child immunization schedule, complementary feeding practices, pag tinanong mo yung mga nanay, alam nila yan. Pati tatay, alam nila. So yung mga sources of information ng mga magulang, mga caregivers, so usually yung parents nila, health workers, social media, and they are very appreciative of the information that they get from the frontline workers. Next slide, please. However, syempre, iba naman yung alam mo sa ginagawa. So yung knowledge that's not necessarily equate to the actual practice or behavior. So, yung mga more experienced, like yung bawa yung mga nanay, yung mga marami ng anak, uh, they said that they are more confident with the knowledge and practices na ginagawa nila. So, some reported engaging child through playing and storytelling, pero marami nagsasabi na hindi na nagagawa yung mga marami doon sa mga nasa listahan ng ECCD uh, law at F1KD law uh, dahil sa housework o meron silang mga ibang mga bagay na kailangan gawin. Like, marami pa silang ibang anak. Meron silang kalabaw na kailangan puntahan. Mga, mga ganong issues. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So, uh, like in many places in the Philippines, mothers are usually the child givers, uh, but we found out that fathers and others take over pag yung nanay kailangan magtrabaho. So, meron, which is the usual case. So, yung mga iba, uh, sabi nila, kaya nung diksin namin, iniiwan mo nila anak nila na walang kasama. So may nagsabi na meron mga ganun pero kung importante importante lang uh, they agree na pag iniwan mo yung bata pwede ma-accidente. Next slide. At yung mga challenges na ni-raise nila during the FGDs. So one is that their income may be insufficient to provide the best quality care na even if they have these uh, knowledge about the best practices hindi nila hindi nila magawa sa totoong buhay kasi wala naman silang resources. Uh, in terms of a delay in, in, in the antenatal care, usually na siya sinasabi, walang pera, nahihiya, hindi sigurado. Kaya sinabihan siya ng nanay niya na huwag na pumunta, so kung maduro na pumunta. Sumunod naman sa nanay. Next slide, please. Uh, ito na yung mga proximal, uh, mga distal uh, measures. So, meron tayong mga kailangan gawin, mga proximal na measures na relate sa health, but in terms of the more distal, medyo malayo na, uh, one one issue is the access of households to resources. And some issue is yung food prices. And when we look at prices, uh, Philippines and Buongo del Norte, sa uh, Buongo Peninsula and Buongo del Norte, generally more expensive yung presyo ng mga pagkain sa Buongo del Norte. Next slide. Uh, in terms of employment, uh, similar naman siya sa, sa national, uh, national rates, uh, but largely to express uh, a third is in agriculture, 27% are low-skilled. Next, next slide. Uh, ito rin ay isang important issue is a poverty, poverty incidence. Um, over the past, what, 15 years uh, or 10 years, one decade, there's a declining poverty rate uh, in Sabuano del Norte. So that's a win. However, it remains high. Uh, in 2015, the area, small area estimates half of all of Sabuano del Norte are so half of all the Buongo del Norte population is below uh, poverty level. And in some areas, as much as two-thirds of, of individuals are poor. Next slide. And siyempre, uh, when we correlate this with the uh, undernutrition prevalence in those areas, pag mas mataas yung poverty rate, uh, more likely mas mataas din yung undernutrition rate. Next slide. So an issue is 
ano mangyayari ngayon kung kung nag-improve yung kung bumaba yung presyo ng halimbawa pagkain is that is that the solution ang sagot eh syempre it depends kasi one third lang naman nung mga nasa sa mga del norte ay nasa agriculture many of them are actually not in agriculture so pag bumaba yung presyo ng pagkain okay yung two thirds pero pag yung one third na nasa agriculture hindi masyado kasi liliit yung kita nila which is a difficult balancing act uh, for for anyone next slide uh, ito na, papahuli na to environmental health, uh, in terms of drinking water, sa, sa mga del norte, medyo data yung data natin, uh, but this is the best available. In 2010, uh, relatively, they have poor conditions relative to the country or the region. Only one in five households have owned own piped water. About 10% use unimproved water sources. So ito yung mga open wells, or yung mga unprotected na mga streams. Next slide. Uh, in terms of toilet facility, 12% uh, ang walang toilet facility in 2010. About a third, uh, with about a third of households have an improved uh, toilet facility, which is much higher compared to the rest of the Philippines. Next slide. Um, hand washing practices very important to ngayon sa panahon ng COVID. Uh, marami naman ang gumagamit. This is from the National Demographic and Health Survey. So Largely with soap and water, 84%, pero more than 10% yung water lang ginagamit, walang soap, or some with no water or soap. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. Um, I turn you over to Al for the recommendations. Thank you so much. Al, please, for the recommendations. Thank you, Mike, um, and thank you, Connie, for the present for the presentations. Okay, let me just check my. Okay, so um, for our recommendations for policy leadership and governance, there's a greater need for advocacy for F1KD or first 1,000 days of efforts to rise and build to your priorities, and of course, using hard evidence um, to show this is very essential. And there's a need for more conscious effort for joint planning and targeting and activities and inputs linked to desired outcomes and joint accountability. So for the leadership and on policy and governance aspect, there's really a need for the F1KD to rise in the agenda. And for this, we need or, or the LGUs have to provide sort of hard evidence to show that. And on, in terms of, of whose leadership is going to be um, very important in terms of providing, say, the, the awareness or the knowledge um, and the data for that, I think our CHOs or, uh, or MHOs um, role uh, is very important in terms of swaying or in terms of really selling the, the idea that uh, we really need or they really need to, to work on the, the nutritional aspects and the F1KD efforts in the LGUs. In terms of financing, um, greater political will and advocacy um, are needed to increase resources for our first 1,000 days efforts. And the allocation and budgeting of resources must be needs-based and evidence-based. Um, what, what we mean by that is that if there are increase of there if there is increased number of volunteers for instance um there has to be also increased budget in terms of capacity building the problem that we had um, encountered during our in or in our study is that this practice of determining the current budget based on the past or the past year's budget is really uh, something that gives a sense that we must do um the usual thing um, so if you are given the same resources for this year as last year, um, it, it gives uh, an idea for people to just carry on with what they're doing. But in fact, um, um, when we look at the, the data, for instance, um, in this LGUs, we've seen that there is really this opportunity of improving this, the service delivery because there are now uh, more volunteers than before. So for instance, in one of the cities that we looked into is that um, the number of volunteers like increase by like 50%, but in terms of um, budget for capacity building um, and budget for their um, other needs, um, this budget did not increase. So I think that's, that's, that's one of the, the problems that has to be addressed. In terms of M&E, um, 
the LGUs have, um, they keep on working and doing things, but they do not invest in M&E. And this is something that they must also invest into. M&E is crucial in the uh, determination of, of effectiveness of the programs, whether they are, meet, uh, they are meeting their targets and that they are um, effectively um, delivering the services. And we've uh, we also noted or we want to recommend that um, OPT process um, must be improved. There's a need for adequate equipment and tools must be properly calibrated. Um, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Abrig a while ago, they use different um, tools. And sometimes when you ask the, the BNS and the BHWs, they would uh, provide different answers in terms of how they do these measurements. And so um, the personnel must be trained and retrained. Also, roles must be made uh, clear in terms of the implementation and processes must be standardized as much as possible. When we say ro roles must be made clear, um, it should be clear as to who or which is the unit that is really um, driving things in the F1KD efforts. Um, one of the, the observations that we had in our study is that there are lots of nutrition programs within one LGU and they are spearheaded by different units. So for instance, um, the office of the mayor has its own nutritional programs. The city of health, the city health officer would have um, uh, different efforts. And sometimes one of them would say, oh, that should be, uh, we should be doing that. And they shouldn't be doing that. So there are these confusions and it's very important that roles um, are made uh, more clear and the processes be standardized. I know, or we know that um, LGUs have this, um, the leeway and the um, sort of um, independence or autonomy in what they, in, in their roles, uh, in their uh, service deliveries. And this is important for innovations to, to be developed uh, or to arise. But um, if, if there are uh, things like this, the fragmentation uh, sometimes can really be the source of lack of coordination and also um, and that has lots of, of uh, negative effect or adverse effect to the service delivery. In terms of, of program and service delivery, uh, still there is a need for improving awareness uh, about ECCD, F1, KD, or first 1,000 days at the local level and also among implementers. There's an urgent need to add health personnel, particularly midwives, to improve uh, delivery of service. And uh, I think this is a, a particular aspect that is very important because when we talk to people, they would say that we are waiting for our dentist um, to, to retire before we can um, recruit two uh, midwives. So uh, these kind of structural problems in, in our um policies also have a very stark or very, um, how do you call it, significant effects in terms of the delivery of services. LGUs must also revisit the work assignments of midwives uh, to even out the workload um, and the schedules of community visits have to be well communicated. Um, one of the problems that we encountered is that uh, people in the areas do not know when is the midwife going to show up because uh, the midwives are sometimes uh, going into like trainings and uh, um, they, 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 you, they sometimes um, skip their schedules in going to these barangay health centers. And so people are waiting in the area, but then the, the midwife is not coming. So the problems are really sometimes it's about uh, communication. And it all also boils down to the lack of midwives because if if other if if many with midwives are on training, no one is uh, showing up in the barangay health centers to provide services to the people. Frontline workers must also be um, better compensated, and, and of course, given trainings in basic anthropometric measurements, data encoding, and effective stakeholder communication. If we want to provide LGUs with um, up to date or more up to date. Um, or less outdated data in terms of OPT in their decision making. Um, we have to improve um, the the gathering of data and also so we have to capacitate people uh, who do the encoding also and the measurements. We uh, we are we are in unison and saying that greater effort and resources um, uh, must be provided for Gida areas, and I think this is one of the the problems in this uh, in these provinces uh, that we visited is that it's really the Gidas um, who have or where 
um, services have failed in terms of, of F1KD and perhaps the other also health services that are related to, to F1KD because of the, the really the, the constraints in the geography of the areas. And so, uh, for instance, in one of the cities that we looked into, although they sort of say that they go there quarterly, what happened is that they just do it like twice a year. And, and this is because um, that, that those efforts visiting the Gidas are really very expensive. For instance, in 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 Kalbayog City, they they have this effort what they call baktas, wherein um, they would uh, pool uh, their staff, their health staff, and other um, program implementers, and they would go up in the mountains and they would spend some days there and provide services. But uh, the LGU said that this is a very costly um, costly endeavor, and so they are looking into other ways of 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 really reaching these people, whether and and. And it's also good. Actually, they know what to do, and they, they have some ideas on what to do. And they're saying that they have to a sort of create packages of of services for like the whole family, so that hindi lang yung buntis ang bababa, hindi lang yung isang bata ang papakainin sa feeding program, and there would be services to the other members of the family also. So they ha they have those ideas, just as they said that they're just they're still formulating it. Also, when we went there, they're just formulating it. And so I think uh, there are opportunities uh, for them improving their efforts, but um, it's, it's really, you know, this is really geography if you're talking about Gida also. And so a lot of effort and a lot of designing, a lot of thinking has to be put into into that into that part of the the, the uh, service. Investment in well provisions and well manned health facilities is also crucial uh, in providing swift responses to, to the needs of key the residents. And then when we when we look uh, into the, for instance, the assignments of the barangay health stations, the, the clustering, although there are barangay health stations. Um, Sort of near this key the residents sometimes they are not uh, well provisioned um, and so and that is also one of the areas that has to be uh, um, um, addressed there's also a need for a more holistic approach for those in, in gida um, so um because the problem is not just um access it's also about conflict um and it's also about poverty in terms of nurturing care and practices, LGUs must continue utilizing and strengthening platforms such as the family development sessions of the four piece and other similar um, venues to educate parents of nurturing care practices. So we found that there's a very um, there's a very good or there's a there's really opportunity for people to to come into FTS if they are F four P. So what the LGU must do is to really use this FPS to not just cater to four P's but also to other um, to the other um, uh, stakeholders or the other beneficiaries. Or, uh, I think it, it, it can be made into like an open sessions for, for all in the barangay, like the mothers, the, even the, the teenage um, teenagers, the girls, because um, F1KD, the, the health of the child, also depends largely on the health of the mothers. And in the areas that we looked into, teenage pregnancies are quite high. And so information and education campaigns for for women in general in the area and also all families um, are, are very much needed in terms of the, the information dissemination. Um, there's also a need for more innovative ways to entice people to participate in government campaigns and programs. As I've mentioned earlier, there are efforts or there are proposals for this at the local level. What they're saying is that they want to like, as I've said, mentioned, uh, to, to formulate packages of interventions and, and um, Actually, when when we talk to them, they are really very, very how do you call this? Excited in terms of their programs. Uh, it's just that um, they're still under formulation right now, and so um, it's something that we we might want to examine in the near future whether they have but these have materialized um, in these LGUs. LGUs must also effectively enforce initiatives in maintaining clean surroundings and in mitigating violence in the community, which are essential to the proper development of the child. Of course, uh, enhancing economic opportunities also uh, is crucial. In fact, this is uh, the most crucial aspect because when we ask um, the, the officials, almost all of them say that it's about economic opportunities, it's about poverty. 
So addressing poverty is a must. Uh, addressing or poverty reduction strategies are uh, very much inconsistent or very much um, corollary or consistent with efforts to, to reduce malnutrition in the future or in areas. So it's um, it's poverty. And then if you don't address poverty, whatever you're doing at the LTU right now, even if you have bright programs right now, if you if you don't address poverty, there will always be malnutrition in this area and they will persist over time if this if poverty is not addressed. There's also a need to understand more deeply the reasons behind the lack of participation or cooperation of households in governmental efforts. Um, as mentioned uh, by, by, I think, Dr. Mike Abrigo um, a while ago, um, people have this connotation that parents are lazy when they do not attend, um, when they do not bring their child for feeding uh, programs. But, you know, parents are also doing a lot of things. They have other children um, to, to look after. To, it's not just one child. And so th there is even a, um, a story that we we heard is that there is um, a severely malnourished child that needs to be hospitalized. But then because the parents could not leave the other kids, um, she has she has many, uh, the, the mother has other, maybe three or four or five other kids. What happened is that the child died because they were not able to sustain um, or they were not able to bring the child to the hospital because they could not, the, the mother could not leave the other children. So it's it's really um, a frustrating story, uh, a really, um, what do you call this, um, sad, sad story that we've heard in many of the, the discussions that we've had with parents. But so um, it's, it's, a, it's, um, it's a multitude of factors uh, when we, we look into the situation in these areas. There are a lot of factors going on. There's geography, there is poverty, there is conflict, um, and there are, are human resource, um, what do you call it, human resource um, constraints, gaps there. And uh, I think we, we need to really sort of make our leaders be aware of, of, of all this. Um, it's not just um, a say, oh, okay, we know that there's malnutrition and we are, we are spending some, uh, or spending um, more on it, they said. Um, we have seen also the, the increase in the health expenditures, but we need to really improve uh, the mindset and improve the, uh, the, the, the ranking of, of F1KD in the agenda of the local governments. I think that's all. Um, thank you.